again to the Theories of Everything program. I'm David Tower. Viewers, this is the first program in our new series, the Future Series, a series about the future of significant phenomena and significant events impacting our planet and relating to the universe at large. In this first program we'll be looking at one of the most significant changes that have occurred in the last 10 years and its future prognosis, and that is the web. Viewers, probably the web is the most significant artifact of our civilization. It has connections to two billion people on the planet, both wired through normal computer systems and wireless through multimedia devices such as iPhones. Certainly almost every major library in the world is digitizing its uh, books, its magazines, its information, and placing it on the web for access. And when we talk about the web we also talk about the protocol, protocols that drive it, the storage devices that uh, accumulate the information as it churns out and that's increasing exponentially. But much more significantly the web is becoming a storehouse, becoming a hub for not just information and data but also for the protocols the equations, the processes, the algorithms that drive everything that we do on this planet, whether it's uh, building practices, engineering, communications, computing, agriculture, every major science and technology and process. One way to look at the web is not just as software that enables us to access documents and information writing on top of the internet hardware um, which allows us to traverse this world within fractions of a second and find information through again software such as Google but to look at it as a complete holistic system it's a system that actually goes much further than storing information um, and being able to access it rapidly or even apply algorithms to it. It's, it's basically linking those minds together, the minds of humans and in the future artificial life as well. It's linking um, 2 billion people now and in another 10 years probably another 6 billion. Now that means that all these minds can engage as they're starting to do now in research and communication uh, social communication such as Facebook for example and most of the other web 2 applications that enable us to link together personal information and organizational information very rapidly so we're becoming the information is becoming seamless but most importantly it's connecting the intelligence of our minds plus the intelligence that is already starting to um, be stored, as I mentioned, the algorithms and formulas, etc. But beyond that, techniques of artificial intelligence as well. And so, what you have then is a is an enormously powerful computational intelligence, in other words, starting to emerge. Now, viewers, that is the current state of play, except not quite, because Web two is only the beginning mixing and matching and connecting in giant networks globally all this information personal not just personal information but again scientific information business information and that's all supported by various software artifacts such as databases languages of various software languages etc beyond that is web 3 which is now starting to come into play and that is the semantic web and that is all about allowing um, the web to be able to automatically or autonomously um, understand better and allow us in turn to access information better and that's done through again various protocols such as on 
domain of ontologies and languages and uh, various inference logic mechanisms. So in other words, once we understand a particular domain, it might be again engineering, it might be uh, astronomy, all the information can be categorized and it can be linked in chains so that if we talk about, if we introduce the concept of a star, the web knows that, that either relates to a to a Hollywood actor, probably, or an astronomical object. In other words, it has to then infer from the context of the conversation or the information around that object what is being referenced or what is um, what the user is is trying to access. So domains of people's status, domains of scientific objects, uh, um, cosmic objects such as stars and planets and so forth, two separate domains but they can be linked together so that there's very little ambiguity and very little confusion when some refers to a, a bright star that's shining. That's Web 3. Web 4 then again is just on the fringe of emerging and that is hugely powerful because it brings into play artificial intelligence. The intelligence that humans have developed by understanding their own intelligence processes or their own, their own processes of, of decision-making such as uh, fuzzy logic, genetic algorithms, uh, swarm algorithms that insects use to locate food, etc. Uh, and to work together. And, um, and many other, there's probably about a dozen powerful algorithms at the moment that combine with human intelligence are going to lead and, and apply it auto automatically, if you like, on the web to solve problems um, generates an enormous computational intelligence as a whole. So that's Web 4. Web 5 is something else and Web 5 is really in the future but is likely to emerge around about 2040-2050. Web 4 will probably emerge around 2030 and Web 3 in full play around 2020. But Web 5 means that there's so much intelligence and knowledge stored and so much can be done autonomously without human intervention, just like major aircraft, major passenger planes are now 90% um, controlled by software without the intervention of a pilot. And 90% of engineering projects and chemical plants and various other processes, uh, inventory, etc., are handled without any intervention as long as the algorithms are approved and the methods and protocols prove to be adequate. By then, the web will become a true partner with humans in decision making. And I'm not just talking about process decision making at the, the lower level, but management decision making, democratic decision making. It'll be a constant interplay between human intelligence and the web intelligence, which includes everything that humans understand. So this is the future, viewers. This is our future, the future of the web and of us, because we're going to be totally, totally contained, if you like, or inter in entangled within the confines of the web more and more over time. And the way we handle this relationship will determine whether it's an extremely good beneficial relation, long-term relationship or whether it can lead to a slippery slope of total um, in, uh, dependence and subjection. I'm David Tao and you've been watching the Theories of Everything program, the future series on the web.